Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. I'm just going to do a quick video today and I'll do a much more fuller video on Monday or Tuesday next week as I'm going to be very, very busy over the next few days. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering the bars pattern from the bear market back in 2018 and how it's relating to the current bear market that we've got here. And I'll also be running through the various time frames to give you an overall aggregate picture of exactly where we are. So we know exactly where the trend is and where the trend is likely to be. I'll also be going through the CPI data, which caused the markets to actually fall down a couple of days ago. And finally, I'm going to be going through the 60 day cycle and tell you exactly where we are and why there is a higher probability that from where we are now, the market's more likely to go up rather than down. And if all that sounds interesting, then sit yourself down, eyes on the screen and let's get cracking. Okay, today I'm going to start off by actually covering this pattern here with the current 12 month bear market that we've just been having since last November. And I've been showing you this in the last three videos now, and I want to look at it much more closely. So if we bring this pattern over here to the current situation here. So as you can see, we topped out in 2018 over here, and that was the equivalent of the 69,000 that we got here. And then we've had this rundown with a series of lower highs, and this is very same to the equivalent of the lower highs that we've got over here. And then we had this mighty fall right down to this level here, and we had this mighty fall down here. And since then, as you can see quite clearly, the pattern has been following a very similar pattern here. As I mentioned in the last few videos, I think the bottom is in for this bear market at 17,500. So my probability for that is around about 75%, but there's still that 25% lingering doubt simply because this cycle is playing out slightly different to the previous two cycles. And therefore you have to allow yourself that wriggle room. So this bottom here was this 2018 bottom at 3,100. And this is the current one at 17,500. Since then we've had this run up which we've just had here. And then the fall, which we've had from that side there. And as I was saying to you, we were gonna come up to the 50 simple moving average and get rejected here, which we've exactly done there. And this is what happened over here. The 50 was over at this point there. So we've got rejected there. As you can see, we got rejected there as well. And we had a little bit of a sideways move before we started moving up. So although people are expecting this market to go down now here, but I feel if we are to continue to follow this pattern, then the likely chances are we're going to be starting to move back up here. It may well be by the end of this year, between now and December, my view is that this could quite easily now start moving just like here, start moving to the upside. However, because the 12 month bear market will take it from bet between where we are now to December. So we now have really a decision to make. If we carry on following this pattern, then we should really now start moving back to the upside. However, there are certain different things in this cycle than the previous cycle. So we know that we can get a shock and find ourselves coming back down again. How far we come back down to create either a proper second bottom here will lower than this one. And of course there is that 25% chance that we roll over here. But to me, when we look at the CPI data, I don't think that that's going to happen. Although I'm quite sure everybody knows that there's a lot of bearishness due to the CPI data. I thought the CPI data was actually more bullish than people think. So that's where we are with this bars pattern. Let's see what happens. Only time will tell where we are, but it's very, very interesting to see some sort of a guide as to how this current pattern seems to be following the 2018 pattern. But somewhere along the line, it is going to stop following this. And that's just the nature of markets. Okay, I'm gonna run down the various time frames to give you an overall picture. And it's not as bad as people keep painting out. So what we have here is the eight EMA and the 21 EMA. We don't have the 34 because there's a six month chart and we don't have enough data there. However, as you can see quite clearly, this eight EMA on virtually every time frame proves to be a very strong moving average. And the market seems to have a very high affinity to respect it. So as you can see, we've hugged this EMA all through the previous bear market in 2015, 16 and 17. And only at this point, after this bear market, did we fall below it. But the following 
six months, we had this rise straight up above it. And currently, we seem to be following that pattern. We've had this bear market since November, and we've fallen below it by June this year. And this is currently where we are, an indecision candle. So we're just below it at the moment, but we've got until December to get above this blue line, the ATMA, and that's at currently at 22,100. And I think we should be able to quite easily get above that. My view is that we're going to be following more of a the, this type of pattern with this green candle over here. Okay, if we have a look at the three month chart, we can see quite clearly that in this bear market from 2014 onwards, we found support well above the 21 exponential moving average. In the 2018 bear market, we actually found strong support on it. And in this current market, we've actually fallen just below that here. Whether we go and find support on the 34 EMA, we'll just have to wait and see. And that's currently at about 15,000 there. But the current candle, which takes us to the end of September, we're showing an indecision candle. So as long as we, at the end of this month in September, move above the 21, then I think we may be well good to go to the higher side. But certainly very interesting developments here of where we are in relation to the various averages and what they're telling us the direction of the market is going to go to. And if we have a look at the monthly chart, the thing that really makes it very interesting for me is that it's giving you a very strong clue as to the entry and exit points on this market. For instance, whenever we've fallen below the three averages here, the 8, the 21 and the 34, which is this point here, this one at the end of 2017-18 in the bear market, this little candle here, and currently look where we are. These have to be the greatest opportunities to buy into the market. And this is why I've been accumulating here, because I know that sooner or later, just like over here, we are going to be, if the charts are to be believed, we're going to be going on to a big run sooner or later. And the problem is that at these points, the fear is much greater and therefore very few people actually buy at these levels. Because when you're at these levels, the fear is always that we're going to go much lower. And we don't. It may well be that this time we go lower, but that's fine. I'm willing to put 75% of my funds accumulating here and would be happy to ride them down and catch the other 25% down here, wherever that's going to be, and then move back up again, rather than to wait with all my funds on the side, because the danger then is that if the market moves up here, you're going to have to chase it at much higher levels. And that was one of the mistakes I made when I was over here. I ended up buying quite a bit of my funds at a higher price than I would have liked to because I was waiting for a lower price and it didn't come. But you have to live and learn. That's how successful traders behave. Just one final point before we move on to the weekly chart. Before I had the break for my health issues, I did a video here at this point, and I mentioned in that video, if you want to go and watch it, that when we were squeezed together by the 8 EMA, the blue line, and the 21 EMA, which is exactly what we did here in this bear market, as you can see, and then the squeeze led to this fall here. And I said at that time in that video, there was a very high degree of probability that the chances are we're going to fall down because this was a continuation pattern here. So the higher probability played out here. So this fall here is the equivalent of this fall here. If you look at the averages. So that's why I'm thinking 75% that the charts, the way they are, are telling us that this is where we are currently at this juncture. And just like in 2015, and this is the point where the highest fear is of people that's because if you've been going through this emotionally, you will be thinking that it's going to go do this. And the same here, emotionally, it takes you on a roller coaster to these points here, and you think that this is going to continue. And currently, if you look at the fear and greed index, you'll see that we've been in fear or extreme fear for the last few months. And everybody thinks that this is going to continue to the downside. And this is a mistake everybody makes. Yes, the possibility is there and a probability of about 25%. And everybody has a decision to make for themselves. But for me, these are great 
buying opportunities. And the fall that we've just had a couple of days ago is another great opportunity. And we always have to think in a contrarian view, always do what the opposite of the herd is. And coming to the daily chart here, I just want to explain this fall that we had two days ago after the CPI data released the inflation figures. So what's happening now is that, as you can see with this headline, the investors have begun pricing in odds of a 100 basis points rate hike at this month's Fed meeting after the hotter than expected August inflation report. So what people are doing now is that people are now expecting a 100 basis points rather than the 0.75 percent interest rate hike that we were expecting. And that was due to the August inflation figures coming in higher than anticipated. So instead of the 8.1 that we were expecting here, we got 8.3. Yes, they're a little bit higher. 8.3 is much lower than the previous month. So we just need to keep that perspective going. And my probability is that the Fed is going to still raise the interest rates by 0.75 percent rather than the one whole percent. Only time will tell. I think they would be very foolish to go to a one percent rate hike because that could actually tip the whole economy into a recession. And I think they're going to try and avoid that as much as they can. So if they were sensible, they'd stick to the 0.75 because the interest rates on the whole, when you zoom out and look at the overall picture, is actually on the way down. The trajectory is down. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens next Tuesday. Going back to the daily chart, I started mentioning some of these cycles that Bitcoin and many of the markets go through, which is a two month cycle that every two months we tend to have a bottom and in between we have a high. So the current cycle, so the last bottom here was the 13th of July. And if you take it from this bottom to the current bottom that we just had recently at around 18 and a half, that would be around about 55 days. So that's nearly two months. So you've got to give around about a 10, 12% either way of those. So it's not gonna be exactly 60 days, but it could be 55 days or 65 days, if you see what I mean there. And then in between this halfway there, you'll find a top. So this top came after the 30 days, i.e. after the halfway, which was over here. So that tells you that this cycle was a right translated cycle. So there was more days for the market to go up than to come down. And that is quite bullish because that's a move from previously where the market was spending more time going down than going up. So that another, so that is another sign that maybe we are actually moving out of the downward trajectory to the upward trajectory. Now the thing is, with the new cycle beginning here, if we move the chart to the left here, so 60 days from this bottom, I would expect the next bottom is going to be about approximately 60 days, like I said, give or take five or 10% either way. So what I would be expecting, so if we put a marker on the 6th of November, which takes us to the 60 days, so what I would be expecting here is that we should have a time to go back up to meet this 25 and a half thousand neckline here before we come back down and make another low here, which I would then think is going to be the last low before the bull market starts again. Now this low could be obviously much lower here. And the danger with what's just happened here is that we may well have topped out after six days. Now, I don't think that's the case for various reasons, as I've explained already, but if it is that we've topped out here after six days, then that means that for the rest of the 60 days, we may have a lot more to go down. So that gives it that bit more room for the market to go further down in this 60 day cycle. But what I suspect will happen is that people will digest the figures from the CPI data and realize that it's not as bad and hopefully by next week, when we have the actual interest rate information as to whether it's going to go up by three quarters of a percent or one percent. And if it is three quarters of a percent and everybody's penciling in one percent, then this is what's going to happen at that point. It's going to go much higher. It's going to do the reverse of this. Anyway, that's food for thought of what I'm looking at. Please remember, everything in my videos is for information only. Nothing should be taken as financial advice. I'm just giving you my perspective and the types of things I'm doing. It's your duty to do your due diligence before you make any investment decisions. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you found value in the video, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.